Hey everyone, welcome back for this week's quick tip. You know, the past few weeks, especially over the holidays, I've gotten phone calls, text messages, emails, people asking me how to make hash browns. Why don't my hash browns come out crispy? What am I doing wrong? They're a soggy mess. And I never thought about it. Whenever I want to make hash browns, whether it be for breakfast or maybe with dinner, I, I just make them. So I never thought about the processes that go into making really good hash browns at home from scratch. And when I got to thinking about it, I realized well, it's really not as easy as you might think. So I thought this would be a great forum to quickly make some fresh hash browns. I want to do this quick because I want to keep this a quick tip, but we're going to go through step by step exactly how to do it. First and foremost, you need three major things, three components to making sure your hash browns come out nice, golden, crispy. Number one, parboil your potatoes ahead of time. What does that mean? Peel the potatoes, put them in boiling water, and let them go for a while till you can pierce about a quarter of a way in with a fork. You don't want your potatoes as mushy as you would for mashed potatoes. You just want to be able to pierce it easily with a fork about a quarter of the way in and pull it out. As soon as that happens, take them out of the boiling water, put them in a bowl, and throw them in the fridge overnight. Because that leads to number two. You need your potatoes to be dry, dry, dry before you cook them. Parboil them, make sure they're super dried out, and number three, a really hot pan. So let's shred these things and then cook them up and you can see how crispy they come out. Whatever you have to shred your potatoes, go for it. A nice cheese grater works just fine. They don't have to be pretty because it's the cooked final product that makes the difference. See how that comes out? These are dry, perfect for hash browns. So next, We've shredded our potatoes. They're nice and dry. They're the perfect texture, consistency, thickness for making hash browns. We need a really nice hot pan, non-stick. Whichever pan you have, make sure it's a non-stick pan. You hear that sizzle? I've got butter in the pan, piping hot, nice and melted, ready to go. All I'm gonna do is some fresh cracked pepper and a few pinches of sea salt, which if you remember from other videos, a pinch for me is about a quarter of a teaspoon. So about three pinches of salt. Mix that together real quick. You guys stay up there. Mix that together. So I've got some salt and pepper seasoned in here. And this is going in this butter. It's, you hear that? <laughs> it's gotta be hot. If you're making hash browns, your pan has got to be hot. And you need to remember, butter burns faster than oil. So watch your heat, but make sure it's good and hot because we want a nice brown, crispy top. And that's it. Now this needs to start cooking. I'm gonna keep an eye on it because it doesn't take long to make hash browns. As long as you have a non-stick pan, you don't have to worry about it. But if you don't, without a nonstick pan or a nonstick surface, don't try to make hash browns at home. Remember, hash browns are a sponge, like the ultimate kitchen sponge. They're gonna soak up all the moisture and they're going to stick. So you need butter and a nonstick pan. And this is it to make hash browns. This is all. Now we just have to watch. You see how neat that looks? Do you hear that sound? It is sizzling and crisping up. See that? You see how they're so easily moved? Butter and non-stick. The single most important thing to remember is great hash browns are crispy, right? Well, the only way to make them crispy is a really hot pan. No, the only way to really make hash browns crispy are the potatoes have to be dried out. You can't boil them, let them sit for a few hours, then shred them and cook them. You really should do this 24 hours in advance. Folks, most restaurants that have hash browns, 
They're buying the potatoes already shredded in bags and they're nice and dry. It's time consuming to do this, but if you want to do it at home and you want to do it from scratch, if you buy a bag of shredded potatoes, there's nothing wrong with that. They're still great. They're nice natural potatoes. But if you want to do the whole process start to finish, cook the potatoes the night before, let them sit in the fridge overnight and really get good and dry, and this is what you will get. I mean, look how beautiful this is. They're moving around. Take a look at what that looks like. Did you see how cool that was? You see how nice and golden brown this is? And they're crispy. Now I want to get the bottom to look like the top and then also make sure the middle is done. So I've, I've got a little melted butter and I'm just going to pour it around the side. You hear that? Because it's hot. I'm just pouring the butter around the edge and I'm moving it around because I want it to cook in. I want it to soak in. The butter is what's going to give it that beautiful golden color and that great salty flavor. When you get to this point, here's your options. You want to make sure the middle is as good and crispy as the outside. Start poking up throughout, move them around a little bit, and let the other areas cook. If you want to add to it, melted cheese, sauteed onions, mushrooms, peppers, however you want to dress it up, do it now. You put them on the crispy top and then just start breaking it in and allowing it to cook. Don't flip the whole thing over like I did. Just start moving it around and let all the areas cook and cook together and all the flavors marinate. If this is what you're after, let this side that's down go for a couple of minutes. Flip it back over. Make sure it's golden on both sides and take it off. These take a few minutes to cook, no matter how you're doing it. So if you want to see how the bottom looks and you're worried you might be burning them, first of all, don't be. Just flip them over. And take a look. See, I still can get some golden in the middle. It's got a little bit of a crisp here, but it could get some more color. So I'm going to let it cook some more. You don't need to be afraid. These are not going to fall apart. It will stay like that. Because they were dried out when we started cooking them and they've got a good crispy exterior. Now I'm just trying to crisp up the inside. Flip it over. Make sure the middle of that side is cooked. Oh. Such a great smell. French fries and butter. <laughs> I love that. Perfect. Beautiful on both sides. Folks, that's it. That's making hash browns. You want to spruce it up for people? Make it exciting. Give it a little color pop. And that's it. Done. How simple was that? And fast. Folks, these are fun to make. Give it a try. Nothing screams homemade country breakfast like some hash browns. And you serve this at dinner and it really catches people's eyes because they'd never think of having hash browns as a side dish with their dinner. Give that a try. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and share it with all your friends. Have a great rest of your week. You hear that? I'll see you all in a few days. Take care. Bye-bye.